Hi everyone, welcome to the module on machine learning pipelines. In this module we will turn, we will take a notebook that we produced previously, a Jupyter notebook with a lot of code, with a lot of experiments, and we will turn it into something that we can easily run, something that is reproducible, rerunnable, parameterized, and so on. So this is what we will talk uh, here in this module. And we'll start with what a training pipeline is and uh, or what is a machine learning pipeline so usually by uh, a training pipeline we mean something that in simple terms it's a sequence of steps that we execute in order to train a model so this is a training pipeline um, so this is something we did previously so if i go to the experiment tracking module and uh, this is what we did in uh, module one and then continued using that in module two we used this notebook this jupyter notebook and later we added uh, uh, experiment tracking here and at the end what we have here is a model this model that will log to our model registry along with experiments and also what we did previously is we try to find the best parameter, uh, the best set of parameters for XGBoost uh, using parameter tuning. So we have this all in a notebook and this notebook is messy. Uh, there isn't like, you see how long it is? Like I don't even know where this cell ends, right? And if I need to rerun it, I would need to open it on my computer and execute cells in order but also uh, like we can see that uh, there is a lot of stuff we don't know which block is doing especially if this is not uh, if we are not who created this notebook right so it's uh, a mess and we want to turn it into something that we can easily execute and this is what workflow this is what uh, a training pipeline is so this is a well we can roughly call this notebook a training pipeline too because if we execute everything in order at the end we will have a notebook uh, at the end we will have a model saved in the model registry but this is not maintainable this is not easily uh, re-executable this is uh, not necessarily reliable way of doing that and yeah it's just a mess right so this is what pipeline is you may also have heard another term, workflow orchestration. Workflow orchestration is a more generic term that just in general describes how we schedule, how we organize different uh, steps that we needed to execute in order. And this is what a pipeline is. So workflow orchestration is a more general term coming from data engineering and machine learning pipeline is specific to machine learning engineering. And this is nothing else but a sequence of steps that we need to execute in order to produce a machine learning model. This uh, sequence of steps is, at least this is what we created previously, is first, um, so this is just a bunch of things we execute in order. So let me just copy paste these things. Uh, and um, so what we created was uh, first we download the data uh, and here I think this is uh, let me make it larger we first download the data sometimes in data engineering we call this ingestion but this is just getting the data from somewhere to either our local machine or our database or whatever so we download the data and the next step is uh, transforming the data and this is what we did here so this read data frame this is uh, actually like the first step okay he's downloading the data getting the data to the computer but then we do some processing uh, some transformation so we turn uh, this to date time field then we compute duration mm, we do things like that so this is transforming data and uh, let me right here filtering uh removing outliers uh and so on like we can also do aggregates here whatever right and ca it can it doesn't have to be one step it could be multiple steps but this is something we need to execute for our specific model right then the next step could be 
uh, preparing data for machine learning. Uh, so here we do some perhaps feature engineering or actually creating this X matrix with features and Y matrix with um, Y column, Y array with a target, right? Feature engineering can actually go between these two steps, like transforming the data, then doing some feature engineering and so on. So here we prepare the data in order to put into the model. Then uh, here, let's say we have this X and Y. And then once we have that, we do hyper um, hyper parameter tuning. So this is what we did in the previous module. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit. So this is what we did here. So we try to find what is the best way, what are the best uh, parameters, hyperparameters for XGBoost using, uh, which library did we use? Hyperopt, yeah. And then um, here, for example, what we do is we find the best parameters, best parameters. And this is what we do in order to train the final model. Right, and then this model goes, so let me put it here. So this is not a step in our pipeline, but um, let me just use something else to show that this is our model registry. Uh, where we save the model. So at the end, this is what our last step produces. So maybe I make it dashed. Um, so at the end of our pipeline, we save the model in the registry. And I think I made a typo here. Right? So this is a simple uh, machine learning pipeline and we have a sequence of steps. And of course, the easiest thing, the easiest way to achieve that would be to take this notebook, turn it into a Python script and put some logic there, have good function uh, functions there, good code inside these functions. So we can arrive at something like that. I did not write any code here, but you can guess that here we would download the data, here we would execute this um, data read this part of the data frame, right? Then feature engineering would be, um, I don't know, uh, like this turning um, the data frame into a matrix and yeah, the, this Y array with target variable, right? And then this find the best model is hyperparameter tuning and then train model is, uh, we use the parameters we found on the previous step in order to train the best model, right? And then we put all these things um, one after another. So we know that we first need to execute that. Uh, then we need to execute another step, then another step, another step, another step, right? So we can have a simple Python script like that. And this is already a good step towards uh, having a production ready machine learning pipeline. We can already call this a pipeline too. It's not as messy uh, as a notebook. It's maintainable. We can split it into different functions. We can add tests, all cool here. So this is already a good step. And we can just take this and execute that. But there are some problems with just using this file as is, right? So first of all, how do we schedule this? Like, do we run it in cron, right? Do we like have some cron expressions? What if we have multiple files like that? Right? How do we do that? Like, how do we, we don't want also to execute it on our, our laptop. We need to deploy it somewhere, right? So then it means that we need to create an instance somewhere and then all the developers need to be able to SSH to that instance, uh, add a cron expression, make sure that the latest version of the file is there. Um, so it becomes a bit difficult, right? So we need scheduling, we need to um, be able to work together uh, it needs to be centralized somewhere, so it cannot uh, work on, or just be on our laptop. Mm. And it also needs to be scalable, right? At some point we'll have more and more jobs. One computer will not be enough. And also like what happens if some of these things fail, right? So what if these things, this step fails? It means that uh, the rest of uh, uh, 
this will fail too. But what if it's just a temporary issue? So it could be that our network is down just for a few seconds, especially, but these two seconds happen exactly at the time when we were trying to download the data, right? And if we repeat now, it will work, but two seconds ago it did not. So typically what we do is add some retry mechanism, which would make our code very complex, right? With all that, usually we don't just take our Python scripts, we actually use tools, special tools for workflow orchestrators, uh, which take care of all that. So the, uh, they are centralized somewhere on the server. Uh, you can work with teams, many teams with your own team and other teams can also host the code there. You can easily update the code in a central location. Um, then it's scalable because you can always add more resources uh, to the orchestrator. Um, then you have usually monitoring, alerting, notifications, uh, and most important, uh, like we also have it here, uh, but all these frameworks, all these workflow orchestrators have dependency management, meaning that we know that we first need to execute this thing, then this thing, then this thing, then this thing, then this thing. So we need to execute them in order. And if this step fails, we cannot execute that step. So first we need to complete this step and then and so on. So all this, uh, there are multiple tools like that. So you have probably heard about Airflow, which is the most popular, uh, it's also quite complex to use tool for workflow orchestration. So it's a general purpose tool. Then uh, Prefect is another tool for work workflow orchestration. Um, then Mage, and there are quite a few of tools like that. And there are tools that are specific to machine learning. So these tools, like Airflow, Prefect, Mage, Duxter, uh, Luigi, many of them, they are general purpose. So they are good for data engineering, they are good for machine learning engineering, they are good for anything where that you need to orchestrate to run um, reliably uh, and so on. And there are tools that are specific for machine learning. So some of them are uh, Kubeflow pipelines or um, I think MLflow has pipelines too. Uh, MLflow, yeah. So they are specific to machine learning. Uh, so they are usually less flexible, and but they are really focused on just machine learning, right? Um, so I hope with this I have convinced you that uh, using an orchestrator is a good idea, and now you know what a machine learning pipeline is, and now we will actually implement it ourselves. So see you soon.